mechanism of heat loss there are four methods of heat loss convection conduction radiation and evaporation if a skin temperature is greater than that of the surrounding the body can lose heat by radiation and conduction but if the temperature of the surrounding is greater than that of the skin the body actually gains heat by radiation and conduction so let's talk about each method evaporation heat loss through sweating or wicking into clothes radiation heat dissipating into cold environment conduction heat dissipating into objects in contact for example a patient lying on cold ground convection wind disturbance of insulating layer of air surrounding body wearing away with it chill blains also known as pernia or perniosis chill blains is the mildest form of cold injury it occurs on exposure of bare skin to cold windy environment within 12 to 24 hours and it get results within a week in this condition temperature should be around 0.6 to 15.6 degree celsius areas involving chill blains causes pruritus pain or burning in ear tip of nose fingers it presents erythematous to valesius macules papules plaques or nodules in sites of cold exposure complications chill blains may sometimes leads to blistering ulceration secondary infection differential diagnosis of chill blains are as follows chill blains lupus erythematosus other disorders cold paniculitis acrocinosis or an odds phenomenon and cold induced vascular occlusion syndrome treatment of chill blains keep affected area warm by wearing insulated clothing gloves and footwear unprotected exposure to cold conditions should be avoided nifedipine is a drug it can be used in refractive pernia or chill blains rapid rewarming moisturizing lotion analgesics can be provided to affected persons how to do rewarming immerse affected body part for 15 to 30 minutes into bath tub adding hexachloroquine or oviodine into water trench foot what is a trench foot it is also known as non freezing or immersion injury it is caused by cold exposure to tissue not resulting in freezing rather immersion of body part for a longer period of time around 10 to 12 hours at a temperature below 10 degrees celsius treatment of trench foot or which involves rewarming followed by dry dressings treat secondary infection with antibiotics extra knowledge in comparison of trench foot just like non freezing we can see warm water immersion condition too warm water immersion injury manifests as painful white wrinkled soles of feet due to immersion in warm water 15 to 32 degree celsius for up to 72 hours also called paddy field foot recovers completely within 3 days with crying and elevation of feet frostbite it is severe localized cold induced injury due to freezing of tissue it is seen in mountaineers soldiers homeless etc frostbite causes immediate self death development of inflammation and tissue ischemia if freezing is rapid ice crystals may form inside cells fluid and electrolytes continuously causing lysis of cell membrane and cell death and inflammation happens by prostaglandin f2 alpha bradykinin thromboxane a2 and histamine this leads to tissue ischemia and necrosis the initial cellular damage and following processes are made worse in setting of thawing followed by refreezing affected areas classification of frostbite divides into two groups superficial and deep injury in superficial it divides into two groups first sinuses not seen over extremity so no amputation required second degree superficial injury sinuses occurs in distal to proximal phalanx over here amputation may require on soft tissue fingernail or foot nail residue in deep injury it is also further divided into two groups third degree injury where sinuses is seen in intermediate and proximal phalangeal joints whereas amputation may require on digits such as proximal or intermediate bone joints fourth degree deep injury sinuses occur on carpal or tarsal bone amputation may require over limb with functional residue 
what are the risk factor of first bite so risk factor of first bite may include inadequate insulating or coverage cloths tight cloths or permeable to wind cloths alcohol abuse smoking previous cold injury peripheral vascular disease such as diabetes mellitus it limits individuals ability to respond to a cold stress exhaustion dehydration malnutrition diet exposure to conductive heat loss due to contact with metal ground or water clinical pictures of frostbite it may present with these symptoms such as cold numbness clumsiness most frequently affecting areas are as follows ears nose cheek chin fingers toes on skin completely lacking sense change in color white or grayish yellow hard or waxy to touch treatment treatment of frostbite depends upon the situation as near cities or nearby hospital or somewhere stuck in mountains first of all we will discuss pre hospital and then definitive care due to frostbite pre hospital can be managed as accordingly remove wet cloths avoid use of fire to rewarm frostbitten tissue it may lack sensation get the person to a warm environment as soon as possible avoid walking on frost bitten feet check any physical injury or fracture of bone or not pad or splint the affected area to minimize injury do not rewarm frost bitten tissue if there is a possibility of pre freezing before reaching definitive care this will result in worse tissue damage placing the affected area in warm but not in hot water or warming it using body heat example placing frost bitten fingers in the axilla do not rub frost bitten areas in an attempt to rewarm them definitive care of frost bite includes thrombolysis for severe injury presenting within 24 hours prostacycline therapy for severe injury presenting within 48 hours hyperbaric oxygen therapy pentoxyphalin drug heparin without thrombolysis thank you for watching take care please do not forget to like and subscribe body capsule